And that is the visible government, the constitutional government we learn about in Civics 101, and it is gridlocked. But somehow Obama can go into Libya, he can assassinate U.S. citizens, he can collect all our phone records without a buy or leave from anyone. Um, he can even uh, bring down a jet carrying a uh, president of a sovereign country without asking anyone's permission, and no one seems to connect the two. The failure of our visible constitutional state and this other government that operates according to no constitutional rules or any constraint by the governed. You go on to say, though, that it's not just the executive branch that is the heart of this, that it's just one of the several constituencies that make up what you call the, the deep state. Well, it's all the national security functions of the government. It's the Pentagon. It's Homeland Security. It's the State Department. Uh, it's also Treasury because they have a kind of symbiotic relationship with Wall Street. For one thing, they control the flow of money. Absolutely. And that's why there's such a, uh, a flow, not only of money, but of personnel between Wall Street and the Treasury Department. There's other aspects of government. There's a portion of the judiciary, a small portion of the judiciary, the so-called foreign intelligence surveillance courts. Uh, most of Congress doesn't even know how they operate. Talk a little bit more about the nexus, the connection between the national security state and Wall Street, because this is a theme that runs through your essay. Do you know that about 30 blocks north of here, there is a restaurant that will sell you a truffle for $95,000. Also in New York, uh, Christie's sold at auction a painting by Francis Bacon for $142 million. Now, a parallel situation with the national security state, the NSA spent $1.7 billion to build a facility in Utah that will collect one yottabyte of information. That's as much information as has ever been written in the history of the world. It costs $400 by the time the Pentagon finishes paying contractors to haul one gallon of gasoline into Afghanistan. That's a real extravagant amount of money. In both cases of the national security state and the corporate state, they are sucking money out of the economy. As our infrastructure collapses, uh, we have a tinker toy power grid that goes out every time there's inclement weather. Um, tens of millions of people are on food stamps. We incarcerate th more people than China, an authoritarian state with four times our population. Does anyone see the disparity between this extravagance for the deep state and the penury that is being forced on the rest of the country. That isn't a natural uh, evolution. Something made it happen. We're having uh, a situation where the deep state is essentially out of control. It's unconstrained. Since 9-11, we have built the equivalent of three pentagons mm. around the D.C. metropolitan area holding defense contractors, intelligence contractors, and government civilians involved in the military-industrial complex. There are over 400,000 contractors, private citizens, who are, have top-secret security clearances. And they are heart and soul of the, of the deep state, as you describe it. Absolutely. They're being privatized which means the power shifts from accountable officials to unaccountable uh, in, um, contractors. About 70% of the intelligence budget goes to contracts. How new is this? I mean, back in 2010, the Washington Post published a stunning investigation of what the editors called top-secret America. 
I mean, we have known about this, have we not? Yes, we know about this, but the intelligence functions of the government are too important to outsource in the manner we have. Uh, it's something where absolute discretion is needed and absolute trust that they are not violating civil liberties. And to put this kind of a, a burden, if you will, on private contract employees is, I think, uh, become a great uh, disservice. You say that, that you came to question this. It took you a while. It was a gradual enlightenment that took place. You were dealing with big numbers and particular details in the budgets that all of these agencies were sending to you when you were on Capitol Hill, right? You were seeing the numbers. Absolutely. You, what, were, what was happening to the numbers? At the end of 2001, is we appropriated a lot of money and it didn't seem to be going to Afghanistan, the proximate source of the 9-11 attacks. It seemed to be going to the Persian Gulf region uh, and I said, what's going on here? Saddam Hussein didn't bring down the Twin Towers. So the little light went on and I began to sort of disenchant myself from the normal group think that tends to take over in any organization. Group think. At, at some point in your essay you talk about how group think drives the deep state. It absolutely does, just as it tends to drive any bureaucratic organization. What do you uh, mean by group think? Well, the psychologist Irving Janus called it groupthink. It's a kind of assimilation of the views of your superiors and your peers. Uh, it's becoming a yes man. And in many respects, it's an unconscious thing. I yeah, remember what Upton Sinclair once said, it's difficult to get a man to understand something when his salary depends on him not understanding it. That is certainly a part of it. You describe Washington as clearly and obviously the headquarters of the deep state, but talk about some of, some of the others who are in the game. Wall Street is perhaps the ultimate backstop to the whole operation because they generate so much money that they can pr provide second careers for a lot of the government operatives. They're going to make more money than they ever dreamed they would on Wall Street. And I think a good example of that is the most celebrated soldier of the last decade, uh, David Petraeus. What did he do when he retired? He went to Colbert Kravis Roberts, a Wall Street buyout firm with 90 billion in assets under management. You describe him as a kind of avatar of the deep state. He is in a way because he, he now represents both ends of it. Uh, we see now our present day Cincinnatus did not pick up the plow when he lay down the sword. Cincinnatus was the Roman who left his farm to become a general in the war. When the war was over, he went back to be a farmer. That doesn't happen today. No, it doesn't. The vast majority of generals seem to end up on the boards of defense contractors. Talk a little bit about what you call this strange relationship between Silicon Valley and the government and how it fits into the deep state. Well, the National Security Agency could not do what it does. The CIA could not do what it does without Silicon Valley. Now, Silicon Valley, unlike the defense contractors, mostly sells to private individuals and to companies. It's not a, a big government vendor. However, its uh, services are necessary and de facto they have become a part of the NSA's operations. I'm sure the CEOs of some of these companies try to obscure the fact that this has mostly been voluntary for many years. You mean the surveillance? The surveillance. The gathering of information of un unknowing citizens. Absolutely. For commercial purposes though. Precisely. They've done it themselves 
and they've assisted the NSA through a FISA court order for an intelligence for an intelligence surveillance act. Um, so this has been going on for quite a while. Yet now, like uh, Inspector Raynaud, they are shocked, shocked to find out. But I think their main shock is that they're now starting to lose market share in foreign countries. These, these moguls, as you call them, pass themselves off of as libertarians. You oh, know they that. do. They make a big pretense about being libertarians and uh, believing in the rugged individualism and so forth. But they've been every bit as intrusive as the NSA has been in terms of collecting your data for commercial purposes rather than uh, so-called national security purposes. But they're in it just as heavily as the NSA is. And they somehow managed to get the intellectual property r laws rigged so that you are theoretically subject to a fine of up to $500,000 for jailbreaking your phone. Which means? Which means if you don't like the carrier on your phone that the manufacturer dictates you shall have and you change it without authorization, um, you don't have the right to something you bought. Could this symbiotic and actual relationship between Silicon Valley and the government, reflecting the deep state, explain the indulgence Washington has shown Silicon Valley on matters of intellectual property? Absolutely. People no longer necessarily own their property that they buy if they're buying it from Silicon Valley they simply have a kind of lease on it. If, as you write, the ideology of the deep state is not Democrat or Republican, not left or right, what is it? It's an ideology. I just don't think we've named it. It's a kind of corporatism. Um, now, the actors in this drama tend to steer clear of social issues. They pretend to be merely neutral servants of the state, giving the best advice possible on national security or financial matters. But they hold a very deep ideology of the Washington consensus at home, which is deregulation, outsourcing, uh, deindustrialization, and financialization and they believe in American exceptionalism abroad, which is boots on the ground everywhere. It's our right to meddle everywhere in, in the world, and the result of that is perpetual war. You say it is shadowy and more ill-defined. More ill-defined than what? It's more ill-defined than simply saying Wall Street or saying the military-industrial complex or saying Silicon Valley or the corporations. It's a symbiosis of all of the above. Here's your summing up. Quote, as long as appropriations bills get passed on time, promotion lists get confirmed, black or secret budgets get rubber-stamped, Special tax subsidies for certain corporations are approved without controversy. As long as too many awkward questions are not asked, the gears of the hybrid state will mesh noiselessly. Is that the ideology? That is a government within a government uh, that operates off the visible government and operates off the taxpayers, but it doesn't seem to be constrained in a constitutional sense by uh, the government. Is there a solution to the way the system works now? I think we're starting to see uh, some discord in the ideology of the factions that make up the deep state. We're seeing Silicon Valley jump ship. They are starting to protest against the NSA. We're seeing the Tea Party uh, bailing out against the deep state. They may be uh, wrong on many economic issues, but I don't think they're necessarily wrong on this one. So the public could be growing wise 
I think they are. There's a much more uh, vivid debate going on in the country about surveillance ever since the revelations by Edward Snowden. Mike Lofgren, thank you very much for being with me. It's good to be here.